you're listening to Aperture and Shutter Speed, Lone Star Internet Radio, Montgomery County's photography and film show. With a little bit of Ozzy Osbourne kicking off our Bark at the Moon episode. If you didn't know, we had the Blood Moon last night, or yesterday morning, I guess. And a lot of great photos. If you just go to Google, type in Blood Moon 2014, there's some really interesting photos that people have taken. I know uh, Tom over here tried to take some pictures of the moon the other day. So we got some great topics going on this episode for i'm just gonna keep the song on i think i'm just gonna <laughs> but yeah welcome to aperture and shutter speed if you, if you didn't know who we were uh this is me dick and uh we have a professional photographer in the studio what's his name trmorephotos.com that's it trmorephotos.com is in the studio with me we're here every wednesday at 3 p.m it's 304 currently and uh we talk photos and film and today's show uh we're being, we're gonna be talking a little bit about astrophotography about equipment about how to shoot the stars how to understand the way the world turns and how you can be very confused when you're trying to get the correct shutter uh, settings and uh, settings on your camera if you're shooting the moon it oh yeah it can it's, be very it's deceiving fun. it's definitely fun and the coolest thing about it is you know you go you go to these sporting events and you see these photographers with these giant 300 millimeter lenses well imagine being part of a telescope that's as big as a dome you know, and you can actually hook up your little 35 millimeter camera to it. There's some cool adapters you can get for your for your camera that's very inexpensive. So if you know a buddy who has a tele telescope, there's a way to attach your camera to that telescope and shoot the moon, and shoot the moon, shoot the star, shoot anything you want. It's too late to get the red moon. It'd be another 500 years, but is it really 500 years? I think it's around 500 years. For it to, well, let's say for it to land when it landed on Passover and all these holidays, high holidays that are. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess. Historically, it it's significant, but I won't get into that. Won't get into it. But yeah, astrophotography is the, uh, I guess, the theme for today's show. So if you want to call in and ask more questions or you just want to complain to us or say, hey, bring back Ozzy, uh, you know, call in. There, we, we do have a phone in line. It's 936-647-3776. That's 936-647-3776. Uh, Tom, how you how you been doing? Good. I just want you to know I will not be biting any bats' heads off. Though. Oh, okay. So well, apparently somebody actually uh, peed on the Alamo recently. Oh, really? So oh, we're gonna need to shoot him. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what Ozzy Osbourne did. He's, oh, he, he didn't know that. He, to, oh, he, I knew that, but I didn't know he did it just recently. No, he didn't do it recently. Someone uh, else did. Uh, so I don't know why somebody. Well, Adam do Sadler's that. done the same thing. I think was it him. I don't, know, some, I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. But, uh, but but yeah. So what? Nothing else. You haven't been shooting anything cool or? Yeah, I shot a wedding at April Sound. Really nice couple. The wind was blowing about uh, fifty miles an hour. Oh jeez. Was it outside? Yeah, my jib was like swinging in circles. Almost took off people's heads and stuff. But that made it exciting. So I did have to bring two cameras, and then also did an interview with a, a gal that has her own business consultant. So we did a three-minute interview. That was fun. So it's been interesting learning more and more as we go. And uh, You didn't learn it? Tell me what you learned. Well. Using that jib with 50 miles an hour wind. I mean, I imagine you learned You have something. to have an assistant. Yeah? Yeah, just got to have an assistant, and I knew that was going to be the case. And also, you know, when you have 50 mile an hour winds, you're going to have a lot of noise on your microphone. So it's going to sound like... <laughs> Oh, like, like just, just, just like how you gave this. Just like yeah, that. That's awesome. So you're going to need to have a sock over it, which I did not bring, but um, my camera, it handled it pretty good. Yeah. It did all right. Yeah. Did that's okay. Good. Yeah. But uh, having a second camera and going up close, getting really close to your subject matter so you can hear the pastor speaking and then them saying their vows. So I had one about uh, 60 feet away zooming in with a 420 millimeter lens and then i got up close with a 24105 zoom on the uh, 5d mark three and just got some really nice h high definition shots and got all the intimate moments crying Woo! boy there's a lot of tears on that one they were very happy yeah. a lot of boogieing down they were boogieing yeah. down i always i always love it when you get when you shoot weddings especially videographers because it's it's just really awkward if you take away the sound yeah. and those are always <laughs> funny pretty, videos pretty to watch people dancing and stuff. It's like, these guys are kind of weird, mm. but, uh, but yeah, so that's cool. You had a, you had a good weekend. I know it was a lot of fun. There was, there were, uh, Oh, and one other thing I, I met another photographer. I want to bring him in to be a guest photographer. His name is Jack 
Dillinger. Jack Dillinger. Sounds like a gunslinger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's a really nice guy, easy to work with, no conflicts. I yeah, you're all about conflict. Way. You like that stuff. <sighs> I love conflict. It keeps the blood going. Yeah. keeps your blood pressure up, your eyes popping, blood veins popping out of your neck and stuff. Yeah. That's good. Well, I think uh, later in the program, basically what we're covering, we, we talked about astrophotography. I think the next segment, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to prepare to shoot the stars uh, and the moon because it's – to me, I really like astrophotography just because it brings another dynamic to the photography world, and it makes you think on a different plane than traditional photography, like portfolio and nature. And it, it really, it's re- it's a lot of fun, even though it sounds very boring. Uh, one thing that I do like about astrophotography is where you are is very important on the Earth, mm-hmm. because if you're traveling, always and you want and it always take an opportunity just to see how what sky is going to be like, so you can take a different picture of the sky like say you're in nevada and or if you're across the world in russia it's going to look different and because of the different light reflections yes yeah. and, and that's actually a huge and particles particles gases what whatever's in between you and your subject is a lot different from you know you're in the studio with this taking a portrait of this model so don't so. eat pork and beans <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with any yeah all right all right gases so let's let's cl- let's Let's close that down. But, yeah, so it's really cool. There's a lot of information on the Internet. I was going to pull up a website that kind of lets you know the moon phases. And what's interesting about the moon is how, we, you know, like we just said with the blood moon, is we can determine when this is going to happen again. So, like I said, preparing, there's a website put on by uh, the Navy that kind of lets you know the moon phases all the way to the 2100s. 2000, like the year 2100, mm-hmm. whatever. It kind of mm-hmm. lets you know where, I mean, I don't think I'll ever, I, I, if I live that long, that'd be great, but I don't know, you can literally go that far in advance right. seeing what the phase of the moon is. Well, the next blood moon is in six months. It's not going to fall on Passover. I don't think that'll okay, ever so happen you again. Okay, so you said 500 years. Well, I'm talking about on Passover. Oh, and that's not. significant. Historically, that's very significant. A lot of significant... Uh, Tragedies, and it was major just, tragedies, and it was just and another heroic day. things have happened when it's happened on Passover. And nothing happened this time. Well, it will. It could happen in four months. It could happen tomorrow. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So keep your eyes out, peeled. But yeah, so I think that's what we're going to go into. Uh, so the next segment coming up will be more of a how to prepare to shoot the moon, and then we get some cool equipment ideas. Uh, you know, what's really neat is we always talk about the iPhone. And how that's changing the photography world and the film world, especially the film world, because you can shoot and, and guess. Oh man! Oh man! I forgot to tell you, I got to look, play with Google Glass this morning. Oh boy! So that was kind of neat, and what that kind of does for a photographer mm-hmm. and for a photo and a videographer, because it changes that changes things. Uh, yeah, I was I was gracious enough to be in front of a guy who got to be part of their Explorer program, wow. and he had one, and we got to talk about it and how creepy it is, but uh, but. That's kind of a neat thing, but we're going to go into the equipment because the iPhone world, people are always like, oh, let's make adapters, and there's literally an adapter for your iPhone to put it up against a telescope. We'll talk a little bit about glass. Don't just leave so, us hanging. Well, that's what's coming up. It's, no, it's 3.12. Okay. We're about to take right. a break. So I was just letting people know. I mean, you know, we can go ahead and take a break if you like. I mean, we can do that. Well, remember, you need to remember to remove your lens cover. Okay, now you're just going 180 on me. But, yeah, it's coming up next on Aperture. And, and charge your battery. Okay, yeah, all right, Charge Tom. your battery. Right, rem- I, I killed Tom. I'm sorry, Tom. Uh, but, yeah, coming up next on Aperture and Shutter Speed, we're going to be talking about astrophotography. So stay tuned to learn more about how to shoot through the gas and get, the, get, get your subject. No pork and beans. That's what Tom says. We'll be right back on, Lo- on Lone Star Internet Radio's Aperture and Shutter Speed. Taste Buds ready for Taste Fest 2014 presented by HEB. This year, Taste Fest will be on May 8th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Lone Star Convention and Expo Center. Featuring local food and beverage vendors and local restaurants that are members of the Greater Conroe, Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce. We've partnered with the Montgomery County Food Bank, so bring in your canned food items to be entered into our raffle. Tickets are $15 for adults and $5 for children. To purchase tickets, visit www.conroe.org or your local HEB Conroe market. See you out on May 8th at the Lone Star Convention Center for Taste Fest.
The East Texas Dream Center is in need of your help. We are a nonprofit Christian organization that houses women and children who are trying to get their lives back after being homeless, abused, or addicted. We are conveniently located at 301 South First Street, Conroe, Texas, 77301, right here in Montgomery County. Our needs are financial and every needs of gasoline, cleaning supplies, laundry soap, Lysol, and whatever else God puts in your heart. To help our ladies and children, please consider a donation. You may visit our website at www.EastTexasDreamCenter.org. Again, so you don't forget, it's www.EastTexasDreamCenter.org. Donations are tax deductible. Remember what Jesus said, with God, nothing is impossible. Hello, Montgomery County. I'm Rachel Baldwin with Special Olympics Texas Area 6. Are you a fan of courage? Are you a fan of determination? Are you a fan of acceptance, grace, and skill? Then you're already a fan of Special Olympics. Make it official. Volunteer, coach, and or compete and be a fan of dignity and acceptance. The dedication of our Special Olympic Texas volunteers provides mainstreaming experiences for athletes with intellectual disabilities. You will touch the heart of another person and it will move you in a meaningful way that lifts the spirit. Please visit the Heart of East Texas Area 6 webpage at www.sotx.org. Also, like us on Facebook to be a fan and be part of Special Olympics Texas. Welcome back to Aperture and Shutter Speed on Lone Star Internet Radio, Montgomery County's photography and film show. We're here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Like us on Facebook, see what's going on. We're doing uh, we're doing astrophotography today. It's kind of a cool day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom looks excited. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna, well, we're going to start with. I'm sitting here with trmorephotos.com, by the way, and uh, he went out and shot the moon last night to get prepared for the show. And I want I, what I want to do here is I want to let him explain what happened, and I just like I just like Ozzy Osbourne. I'm just gonna keep him on. Rock down. But anyway, I, I, I was interrupted. Uh, he cut me off. So remember to okay. That, those are the basics. Remember to format your memory. Why are we? Card. Oh, remember to wipe the me- format your memory and... card. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I did. I went outside, and I've always had problems with shooting the. You moon. went outside. I went outside, and I got some sun. I just got some moonlight, and some uh, moonlight. I've always had some problems shooting the moon, and I, I just walked away from it in the past, but I was determined this time because of the blood moon. So what I ended up doing is starting a, a very uh, uh, long shutter speed, even down to like a 15th of a second, and it was just terrible. All It just looked like a, you know, a light coming at you or something. There's no definition at all. And I ended up shooting at a 2,000 shutter speed and an ISO of 1,600, and the aperture was 13, and that's when I got definition. So I was very surprised, and I got some really good definition, you know. I mean, I didn't have a telescopic lens, a 1,000 millimeter or anything, or the camera, the 60D you're going to talk about that's designed specifically for shooting things like the moon or stars. But uh, 5D Mark III, yeah, did pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, did pretty good. Yeah. So how long did it take you to fully get the shot you want? About 20 minutes. I, I just, I was about ready to give up. Well, we need to post that. And we need yeah. to post those images. Yeah, it's just the moon. You know, I've always just avoided it because it's such a common thing. But uh, it was interesting to do, and it did come out. What do you mean, so common excited. thing? There's only one. No, no, but you see it all the time. Know, you know, it's like a mountain. You live in Colorado. Well, you see the mountains. You're well, like, so they're there. To, to give a, p- a person an idea, especially if you're an amateur photographer, it's it's funny because when you prepare to shoot uh, your subject, you got to understand where your surrounding areas and what's between you and the subject. And there's a lot going on in between you and the moon. And a lot of people don't see it, and that's one, one one cool thing about photography is your camera will see it. To give you to give you an idea, and I use this as like, kind of like as an example with uh, underwater photography. Uh, the camera can only see, and this is kind of the opposite. Uh, uh, the camera can only see so much and only focus on certain points. So that's why when you're watching TV, especially like the Discovery Channel, and 
you're watching the shark videos, like that underground guy or an underwater scuba diver is filming it. This looks like they're filming fog. And all of a sudden, the shark just appears on camera. And that's not all the way true when it comes to the human eye because the human eye has a lot more capabilities than the camera and a fixed focal point, Mm -hmm. especially video cameras because video cameras are always constantly moving with their focal and it can't keep up. So it looks murky and it looks like it can't only see four feet in front of you, but in reality, it can see a lot further. Uh, The greatest greatest thing to show is get one of those underwater cameras and especially like the GoPro. The GoPro comes with an underwater housing unit and you just see see how long it takes when you move really f- slow and fast how how the depth is adjusts so really no matter how much light you have it could be crystal clear water it'll still have a hard time seeing 10 feet in front of front of the shot so the same thing with astrophotography if you're shooting in Houston you can imagine the pollution being affected cuz you don't necessarily necessarily see it but it's going through from here to the moon and the moon has a lot going on because it's reflecting the sunlight. It's also reflecting light off stars. And it's reflecting, uh, we're, we're trying to go through the clouds, through the gases. And probably the coolest thing is like the nebulas that, that give off light that you don't necessarily see the human eye. But if you shoot with a telescope, you'll be able to see so much stuff mm-hmm. goes on mm-hmm. in the sky. And that's why when you go out to the countryside, you're able to see more stars. Because the light is coming through the gas. It's a little clearer, so it's getting through all the gases, getting through the pollution, and uh, you can see more. Because those stars are always there. It's not like they they just don't appear over Houston. But, uh, but yeah, that gives you an idea of how, how it works. Because, you can, like I said, you can imagine if you're out over in, you know, in Montgomery County, over in Willis, you're going to see the stars a little better than if you were in Houston. Right. And especially when you're shooting the stars, that's the that's the ideal thing. Like I said, it's important to know your location, where you're going to be when you shoot, because you can get a little bit more. So, uh, like Tom, where did you shoot from yesterday? I just shot out of my, from my backyard. So I it was mean, pretty w- dark there. W- w- how many stars could you see? Uh, I counted uh, three thousand. Three. Okay. Well, I meant more of you know, was it was there a lot going on, or was it just you? Yeah. Almost... Yeah. You know, I, I'm in the woods basically so i see a lot more than if i was in houston uh, all of the city lights the pretty lights taking uh, away the uh, ability to see the moon but see so we take that in consideration now we're going to get more into when you're setting your your camera now the optimal setting for a camera is a low iso and a high shutter speed and also what else like a good focal point so one thing when you're shooting the moon with the camera of still camera you want to put everything on manual and yeah and if you're going to use automatic your automatic focus if you have the iso pushed up to say 1600 if your camera will work well at that level then you will be letting in enough light for the sensitivity uh that's needed for the camera to focus and if you try focusing with auto focus and it will not work that's why is because you don't have enough light hitting that sensor for it to to activate and it'll just be going zzz, 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 and it won't go beep and tell you that it's time to shoot it so your other option is of course to put everything on manual and just manually focus your camera but at a 2000 shutter speed you don't really need a tripod and you don't have to put it on a timer a two second timer um, so that's kind of an advantage. So real high shutter speed. That's a clear sky, no clouds, just crystal clear skies. And uh, it'd be kind of cool to have some of a tree in the background to give it kind of a, an effect of distance there. And um, a, a wolf crying in the background. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> so that high shutter speed and high ISO getting your lens some light in there and then a high aperture of 13 and you're going to get very good results you'll have to blow it up um but it's pretty good you can get some pretty good results and, and another thing too what's even what's even neater is filters because right. a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of filters out there for your camera that you can use for different scenarios like hydrogen lights uh you can do it for sunlight you know polarizing filter circular polar pol- polarizing but then when it comes to shooting the sky, like say you do live in a suburban area or a heavy populated area, they have narrow band filters 
uh, these are keywords, by the way. Uh, and they have broadband light pollution filters that you can go out and buy. I mean, they're they're pretty dang expensive. They're about a hundred dollars. Mm. Uh, basically, what it is, these gases around the stars, they emit a certain uh, wavelength of hydrogen gas that kind of puts out too much light, so your camera overcompensates, and that's why it looks like when you shoot the moon just on your backyard, it just looks like a ball of white, right. and you don't get any definition and things like that. It's just because your camera's your, confused. Your camera's confused Doesn't with all the light coming through, right? And these narrowband filters really they help out. They really do, and it's really cool. And what's even better, I guess we'll we'll uh, we're gonna be taking a break here pretty soon because we're gonna start getting into the equipment part of how to shoot outside, but. Uh, when you're doing, when you're shooting outside, it's really important, like I said, to know where you are and know what the sky's like, because uh, there's a couple like weather is extremely important, especially what what was going on the day before and the week before, because of where the where the Earth's turning and knowing where how much rain has come through, because it's just it, basically whatever's coming between you and the moon. That's what's going to prevent you from getting your shot. And keep in mind that when it rains, it clears the air of pollution and it makes for a better shot. Yes. So after the rain is not a bad time to set up. Yeah. So you can plan your shots and it makes a big difference. And I would like to talk about in uh, probably our last segment here about shooting uh, landscapes and planning a landscape shot and not just jumping out of your car and taking a shot, but really taking time to study the environment and how you can make it for, make for a much more uh, pleasing shot and save yourself a lot of time and really put yeah. some prof- a professional spin to yeah. it. Yeah, but what, what I want yeah. people to take away with from this segment, like I said, is if, you, you got to, if you're expanding your arsenal of equipment, you know, the broadband light pollution filters, because it really is, that's what it is. Like the word pollution kind of gets a meaning where we think of, you know, cars and things like that but when i say light pollution it's really what reflects light in a negative way the camera doesn't understand and especially with when it comes to clouds and gases when you're shooting beyond the atmosphere because the atmosphere itself is is light pollution Mm -hmm. because the way the the sun reflects off the moon and the moon comes down to us especially the stars that's why the eye can't see the human eye when you're in a, a heavy light pollution area you can't see all the stars Mm -hmm. but when you're out into the country you can see all the stars because the light pollution there's a lack of it so uh it's kind of it's a very basic concept especially when you're shooting so like you said when there when it rains make sure to have your camera ready afterwards that night because you you might have a little bit more clear shot and the clearer the 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 less in between you and the moon the more definition you're going to be able to get on the moon because the moon looks pretty cool if you get a good shot and especially we'll talk about equipment what equipment to have besides these filters to help you with managing the pollution and things going on but we're gonna uh we're gonna be taking a break right now on aperture and shutter speed we're here every wednesday at 3 p.m talking photos and film with me dick schischler and tom moore trmorephotos.com and we'll be right back on lone star net radio yeah At Jazzy Junk, volunteers reclaim, restore, and recycle. Jazzy Junk is a nonprofit resale storefront where you will discover wonderful, unique finds at very affordable prices on furniture, antiques, books, art, home decor, and more. When you shop Jazzy Junk, you support New Danville, a community for adults with developmental disabilities. We receive new donations daily, so plan a visit to Jazzy Junk today to find that perfect item or gift. Our motto is here today, gone today. So remember to hurry in and shop often for the best selection. Jazzy Junk is located in the outlets at Conroe on League Line Road and I-45 North. Call 936-441-4500 or visit our website jazzyjunk.org that's J-U-N-Q-U-E for more information and store hours. Have you ever wandered around a parking lot trying to look like you actually know where you parked? Then you'll love the Mark and Cindy Show. If buying toilet paper with aloe vera is the most exciting thing you're going to do today, then you'll love the Mark and Cindy Show. Even if you haven't tweeted, you'll still love the Mark and Cindy Show. Mm, How about twerking? Ew, that was one step over the line, Mark. Well, well, you said toilet paper. Look, we want listeners to tune in to the Mark and Cindy Show at 10 o'clock every weekday morning here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Uh, The Mark and Cindy Show, you know, it's like visiting with your best friends for coffee, except we will never stiff you with a check. And one of us 
always knows what she's talking about. Mm, well, okay, but it's still called the Mark and Cindy Show. You know that. <laughs> we'll see. The Mark and Cindy Show. Tune in to Lone Star Radio every weekday morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Did you know there are over 800 abused children in foster care in Montgomery County? Will you help make a difference? I'm Susan, a volunteer with Casa Child Advocates of Montgomery County. April is Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. Casa Child Advocates trains and supports volunteers to be the voice of children who have been removed from their home because of abuse or neglect. We need volunteers just like you to speak up for these children. To learn more about becoming an advocate, please visit casaspeaksforkids.com or call 936-441-5437. Bark at the moon. You're listening to IR Lone Star Radio. I'm Tom Moore, trmorephotos.com with my partner here, Dick Schisler. And hey. we are going to be talking more about astrophotography. astrophotography. Nature photography is our theme this month. So like I said, we oh, you know what we haven't mentioned? We haven't mentioned our little uh, ah, giveaway, our contest. So yeah. basically, Taste Fest. Uh, Taste Fest tickets, there's four of them. That's a $60 value. You uh, Taste Fest is going on May eighth. The Greater, Greater Connor, Lake Connor Chamber of Commerce puts Taste Fest on every year. Basically, what they do, it's really cool. They invite all the local restaurants and vendors that make make alcohol, make whatever drinks. They come and they show off their stuff. So there's booths everywhere that have different types of food. Uh, you get to eat it all. This is what the t- this is where the tickets get mm. you in. You get you get in. They get into the gate, and then you get two uh, people twenty one or over get two. Adult beverages. Right. Included in that $15. Included, included in the ticket. So we're giving four away, and the way to win them is it's really simple. You do the best nature photography shot, and you submit it to us. You can go to Lone Star Internet Radio and submit the photo that way, or like us on Aperture and Shutter Speed on Facebook and submit it that way. Because we're kind of struggling with our Facebook page. We only have three likes. Oh, my. We need more likes. Yeah, but we do. we don't talk about it. That's the Get problem. all your girlfriends, man. You got 10, 15 of them. Well, it's not. Well, and it's have not. them send it in multiple I like times. how that's, I mean. Uh, yeah, you're, women you're, chasing you. Yeah. You're, you're giving. Down. Me, you're. <laughs> Hound I dog. It. I love it. We're talking about nature photography here on Lone Star Internet Raiders, Aperture, etc. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, uh, don't let your main gal hear that. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we've been talking about filters and how cool they are, especially when you're trying to shoot through the gas. Kind of like Tom, it's kind of hard to shoot through him. But uh, one one thing I want to start with, off with, because there's practical devices you can get, but one of the coolest things that Canon started doing, if you didn't know, the uh, Canon had this 20D that came out, the one I, camera I had. And at the same time, they brought out a camera that was specifically made for astrophotography. And it was basically, it was a 20D that they had, it, the keyword is 20DA for astrophotography. And right now you can actually get the Canon EOS 60DA right now. I think it's around $1,400 at Adorama. Uh, and what it is, it, it's, it's actually kind of interesting because they had to go through the camera to, to make some little adjustments so you have a better way of shooting through Light pollution. It creates a sense more greater sensitivity. Yeah. Well, explain. It, well, to explain how the camera really works is there's an infrared signature, and it's a sensor. Basically, it sends out a test. So, like when you're shooting a picture, when you're shooting a subject, and some people, especially they have the large flashes on it. If you see like a red, it almost looks like a red dot or a red, right. you know, um, hex pattern. It's identifying their face. the subject. It's identifying the subject and reading off the light, seeing what's going on. And see, that's what's kind of neat, kind of going back to when you're shooting underwater, how the depth, it can't go that far. Well, with the photographer, with this, uh, for this camera, basically what it does is it has an adjusted infrared sensor, and it picks up reddish hues a lot better because there's a lot of red in space. And uh, it's the hydrogen alpha levels. It actually triples in the EOS 60D compared to the other EOS 60s mm. and the regular camera. So it triples the ability to see hydrogen alpha light levels so it's i know that makes no sense to most people but basically it it sees more of the reds in the world so if you're taking a picture of the moon you get to see more of the actual moon because it sees through that white light the pollution 
and picks up the more details. Main thing is, is that it works. Yeah, it does. It works. And is it worth the extra extra dough? I think if you're shooting astrophotography. If that's your passion, go yeah, for go it. go for it. Like yeah, right now I'm looking one. at Adorama.com. You can get one for $1,500 and free shipping, all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's the same camera as the 60D, but it has some adjustments, light adjustments for the infrared. And then uh, and also I think it has uh, an optional time remote controller with it for more longer exposures and automatic shooting. But I think most cameras have that because because right. the next thing we're going to talk about is how you can hook up your camera to a telescope. Right, and if you want to keep it on the low end, and you already have a telescope, or your friend Ben has one, you can get your iPhone and hook that puppy up. Yeah, there's some really cool little devices that uh, basically it's a tripod mount for your iPhone, and what it does is uh, if anyone knows anything about telescopes. Telescopes are pretty, they're all different. They're, well, of course, they're all different, but there's different ways to do the eyepieces. And what you can do with the iPhone is you, if you had steady hands, you can literally hold the lens over the eyepiece. Very it, steady. Hands. Very steady. So they make an adapter for this. So you for, need to be like air temperature or you need to be like room temperature to do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do it, but they make adapters. So to give you an idea, go to telescope.com. And they have an astrophotography section of the website, and there's mounts. So you can get these mounts for around 60 bucks that basically slide your iPhone in, and this, it goes onto the tripod. Like, you literally screw on mm -hmm. to the tripod just like a camera, and then it has this mount that you can basically do a 180, and then it has a clamp for the eyepiece. So it only, it only fits certain types of eyepieces, so I really encourage you, if you have a tele, if you have a telescope or you know somebody has a telescope, find out the details first. Yeah, get a about, salesman that knows what they're talking about. No, not a Go, salesman. Well, I know, but if you're going to buy it, get them to get the you know, specifications to, on it and make sure that it will adapt you, you to what you've got. You just need to know what the eyepiece level is. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. And then, yeah, because there's different diameters. Like the average uh, eyepiece for... Uh, telescope is 1.25 inches. Okay, that's the average. I mean, it's that's how wide, that's how long it is. So I never thought of that. Yeah, that's what. It's it, just not, not my thing. But some people might love it, and so that's a well. Good those thing are for the know. lower end, right. medium end right. range telescopes. No one right. has. A, I mean, what person has a ten thousand dollar telescope? Yeah, well, some people. Are. Well, yeah, but then uh, the other option, which is even cooler, is buying the full out kit for your DSLRs or SLRs. Now, what you're doing with that is it's uh, you're basically replacing where your lens is, taking off your lens or the T mount, and you literally screw on the camera on to onto the cool. eyepiece. Yeah, it's and a, it acts like just a big it, fat lens. Yes, uh, and this is where the 60DA comes into play because that's really the ideal setup is finding the 60DA. The adapter, so you can go really like Adorama has them, B and H has them, Adorama has them too. So the keywords for these adapters is uh, telescope T mount adapter, and then you have to figure out what millimeter your eyepiece is because they have different. Because basically, it looks like to make it even weirder looking, um, it's like it's like three different slide ons for your camera. So you have the T mount adapter, which goes directly onto your camera, that goes where your lens would slide in, and then that allows a thread. And that thread is then a tube, and that tube is then the adapter piece for Perfect. the eyepiece. So you yeah. can have a, and some people make tubes that you can enter smaller tubes, wider tubes, depending on your eyepiece of the telescope. But the key word there is T mount adapter and then telescope adapter, which uh, ref refractor and reflector. So those are those are how the refractor and reflector is how the tel the telephoto, I mean the telescope reacts to how it's working. So you need those two different types of adapters to, to be more flexible with right. what kind of tele telescope and then uh but that's if you're shooting with a telescope you need to get a t-mount kit it's really easy just go you can go to anything like google and just type in t-mount eos eos for canon and uh, they have them for nikon too and it's it it's pretty neat and they're cheap they're like inexpensive like the one i'm looking at is for 35 millimeters or digital cameras and it's kind of the starter kit, and it's fifteen bucks. Ah, wow! And that that's just for the one point two five inch eyepieces. But you if can, you're real nice to them, they might give it to you. It's so cheap. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. But uh, but there's other there's more expensive ones, and there's uh, you can get ridiculous with it. Actually, you should go online and go to Google Images and type in, you know, uh, astro astrophotography adapter kits, and like people have attached these things to like to literally like the telescopes at the observatories. Mm -hmm. So you can get some really cool pictures, but uh, but with that, then now let's go to that. Let's get back to the basics because we're gonna have to take a break here in like five minutes with equipment. Uh, 
what let's do, let's talk about what you have now. So we talked about those filters, those narrow band filters, and those. Uh, sorry, it's kind of kind of choked up there. Uh, broadband light. Don't get filters. emotional. I'm not. I just so that we talked about broadband light filters and narrow band filters because you can get those today, and for your already existing camera, and the equipment you need for shooting a tripod, of course. And I would recommend, highly recommend, a remote for your camera. Oh, absolutely. And most cameras, yeah. pretty much from 1980s, have a remote built in set up. So right. you can just buy a remote. Remotes are around twenty to forty dollars, mm-hmm. depending on how how many features you want on the remote. But you really do need that because of it. It helps out, especially if your your camera's below your waist. No camera shake. Well, because when you're dealing with these telescopes, some of these telescopes need to be off weighted. And uh, they're huge, right. so uh, like yeah, your yeah, camera yeah. will literally be touching the ground, right. pointed up, and this tele the the scope at the end of the scope will probably be up due to your face. Right. So it's like a seesaw, mm-hmm. and so you're not going to want to bend down there every right. time. So you have you there have that you cool go. stuff. But uh, but you, so you need a tripod, a good tripod. Uh, there there are astrophotography tripods out there. It's kind of crazy, but there are also those are meant for if you're going to have a telescope attached. So they they bring the off weights, and there's also mecha- there's actually a mechanical. Um, it's kind of like a mechanical system, kind of like your jib, where you can move with like a controller, move the telescope. Mm-hmm. And and that's actually because, and this is kind of cool, because the way the Earth moves, it's motion. There's a lot of motion mm-hmm. going on, and especially in the camera, if you're because you've got to be as still as possible. What's neat is these uh, tripods hook up to a computer, and it moves the camera with the Earth. So if you're trying to shoot a certain uh, solar system or a constellation, it's going to continue moving. It's not going to stop for you to take a picture of it. So they they have the technology where you can put it into the computer where the, the telescope actually moves. So it continues to, to counteract the movement. Hmm. So it keeps the image still. It's really, I mean, it's it's pretty neat. And those ca- those things are like $6,000. Yeah. But uh, but we're talking about right now what you got to have in your arsenal, uh, what, what a normal amateur photographer right. or professional photographer who wants to shoot the moon. Uh, another thing you're going to need, like I said, tripod and a remote. Another thing you're going to need is you're going to need a telephoto zoom lens that it would hit 200 millimeters or higher. So uh, to get a good shot of the moon or a good shot of anything really, because if you have a wide angle zoom lens uh, like mine, like the one I have, 17 to 40, it's not going to be able to get the definition of the moon. Mm-mm. It's going to have the white light, and I might be able to get it depending on if I am patient enough, but you need 200 millimeter or more. In a certain circumstance, since you don't have to be as uh, controlled over the aperture and the uh, and the shutter speed, you can get adapters. There's there's uh, telephoto co- adapters, converters like a 1.4 uh, extender. They're called ad- extenders for your lenses. You can use those here because you're not really you're, you're a lot more flexible on what you uh, camera setups uh, settings you need. You don't need to have a specific. You don't need a high resolution. You can really shoot the sun or the the moon. With a higher ISO and a higher shutter, or a higher shutter speed, so you don't the diminishing returns isn't really a big a big effect here. Shooting the sun would be very very challenging. You would have to have some major filters to do that. Well, well, so, that's for another day. Yeah, it's another day. But so you have the two hundred melt your camera the two hundred millimeter lens. So you need that to get a good shot of the moon. And then these filters I've been talking about, the pollution filters and also the uh, narrow broadband filters. Because it really is. And what I love, and this is if you're listening, you're an amateur photographer, you can tell people you're a science photographer now. Because well, that's, uh, that's heavy. Because astrophotography is one of the first areas of photography that was considered a scientific field stu- mm-hmm. of study. Mm-hmm. So because they could use it to study scientific methods and things like that. So if you shoot the, if you shoot the moon, say you're a scientist, that's what I would do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, give yourself some stature. Yeah, yeah, be that's, important. But uh, that, that's really what you need. You need a good tripod, a good lens, a good filter, and possibly a remote, and patience. And if you want to style out the big bucks, you can get that remote control tripod thing that is ridiculous. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, is there any other comments you want to talk about shooting shooting the moon? Because you're the one that did it last night. Mm, no, I think you covered it. Well, I mean, cool. You definitely had a handle on that. Did cool. your research. Well, I try. Yeah. yeah, I try. Sounded good. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a quick break here on Aperture and Shutter Speed. If you have any questions or if you want to email us or anything, just go to our website, IRLoneStar.com, and you can contact me at dick at IRLoneStar.com. Call in right now, 
3776. That's 936 six four seven three seven seven six you can call them we're gonna take we take anybody yeah well, we want to talk about shooting landscape photography that's next, next. with tom he's gonna talk yes. more i'm gonna shut the heck up oh but, you did a great job but you're listening to aperture and shutter speed we're here every wednesday at three o'clock we will be right back after these messages SPCA Pet Snap of Montgomery County is a 501c3 all volunteer based rescue and adoption organization with a no kill policy for healthy and adoptable animals. Our name states what we believe Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. People eliminate the suffering. Spay, neuter, adopt, please. We rescue abandoned, abused, or homeless animals do whatever is needed to make them healthy and happy, and then we find them loving forever homes. We envision a county where every companion animal finds a permanent and compassionate home, where communities are enriched by the special bond between people and animals, where cruelty no longer exists, and where every home practices responsible pet ownership. You can contact us at www.spcaofmc.com. The SPCA Pet Snap of Montgomery County encourages you to think adoption first. Tri-County Services provides services to children and adults with mental illnesses, substance abuse disorders, and intellectual developmental disabilities in Montgomery, Liberty, and Walker Counties. Offices are located in Conroe, Cleveland, Liberty, and Huntsville. Some mental health services offer focus on resilience and recovery. Services and supports for individuals with intellectual development disabilities focus on skill development and independence. Tri-County Services offers 24-7 crisis intervention and evaluation with Crisis Hotline 1-800-659-6994 and their mobile crisis outreach team psychiatric crisis treatment is available at psychiatric emergency treatment center in conroe substance abuse services include treatment for both youth and adults substance abuse prevention class are also provided for younger children and teenagers peer support services for veterans are also offered by tri-county services for more information about all programs provided by tri-county services call 936-521-6100 or visit our website at www.tricountyservices.org You are listening to IR Lone Star Radio. I'm Tom Moore, trmorephotos.com, with my partner here, Mr. Dick Schistler. And what we're going to be talking about here is landscape photography. And I want you to get over the idea or the concept of point and pray, doing the point and pray technique. It is not an option. Uh, what I want you to do is consider this. Consider... Finding a location you're really interested in and not just take a shot, get out of your car, you know, pull your camera out, take the shot, hopefully make your adjustments so that you get good resolution and saturation and always, always have your camera focused well. If it's blurry, it's a dead shot. And also, there's a difference between formatting and deleting. When you delete something, you're just deleting that one particular item. When you format your card, you're eliminating everything on the card. And that way, you're optimizing your memory on the card. And you don't have extraneous things on the card that will take from. Or you say, how did that get in there? So formatting and deleting. Consider formatting before you start a new job. Okay, so here's a scenario that I want you to consider. You've got a location, a landscape environment that you really want to photograph. Don't just take the shot. Think it through. Go on location. Walk the grounds. Take time to look at different angles such as shooting from a low position and uh, also going to another location, uh, shooting if you're into climbing trees or if you have rocks you can get up on, uh, you know, take that angle. Um, think it through. Take, you know, a week to imagine what you want. 
don't just start taking photographs and say, well, I'll, I'll take 200 shots and I'm going to do the point and pray uh, approach and hopefully I'll find something because uh, you're going to waste a lot of time and you're going to uh, enhance your frustration level. So, you know, Arnold Palmer used to say, I would hit that ball thousands of times before I even pulled my uh, club out of my bag. So he was rehearsing it over and over in his mind. And when he stepped up to actually hit the ball, he was just reenacting what he had in his head. So, and also keeping in mind that your most cameras have a sweet spot, and that sweet spot is usually around aperture of eight. And that, in other words, your best saturation, where your colors are going to pop, where you're just going to get the best resolution starts at around eight. And of course, your depth of field is going to increase. You'll have uh, just more items in or content that's going to be focused. And when you're shooting landscape, 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 you want to make sure that you have a point of reference that you're focusing on. If it's a mountain, if it's a flower, if you're shooting like there's a lot of blue bonnets out. If you're shooting blue bonnets and all you do is sh shooting the tops of them, you're going to get a boring shot. But if you get down to the ground level and you will focus on a particular blue bonnet, then the eye is going to be directed toward that particular blue bonnet and all the purple around it is just going to enhance the shot. And the viewer is going to see, oh, that is a really beautiful shot. Um, and it's going to greatly improve improve your composition for that shot um, your ISO is very important and if you're going to push the ISO please make sure that you know how far you can go with your ISO if you take the ISO up too high then you're going to get a lot of noise or it's going to look pixelated or you can say it looks blurry and again the old motto, a blurry shot is a dead photograph unless you're doing something very specific. Uh, remember to remove your lens cover. Always remove wow. your lens cover. I just have to say that over and over. I catch myself doing it. I said, what's wrong with my camera? I'm fixing to shoot this wedding and all I see is black. I didn't take my cover off. Nah. Can you believe that? Wah, wah, wah. Okay. Man. So... So next, uh, I think next, uh, hopefully next week we'll have a guest. Is yes. that what you're trying to do? Next hopefully week we'll we're have... have a guest. No, yeah. not next week. I'm sorry. Can't happen next week because he's real busy until school is out. Okay. So he's in school? Is no, he... no. He's, he's taking. He's 15? <laughs> no, he's not 15. Um, he's taking photos okay. of, you know, seniors and things like that. So he is a pro. And he does beautiful work. I saw his website. It's it's really beautiful. So he was excited to uh, talk, and uh, we we're going to talk about him and put him on, you know, in, in the spotlight, if you will. And uh, another little tip tidbit of information here: if you're shooting outside and you're shooting, say there's a, a like a barn or something down uh, down a hill. Make sure your camera is level. Do not shoot it and it's lopsided unless you want a specific uh, you know, spin to your photo. Make sure it's level. And um, there are a lot of uh, things to consider such as the rule of thirds. We read from left to right. And if you will put you're your going subject into the basics. matter. You're going into the photo basics. Right? Yes. Photo basics. Remember rule of thirds. If you you know, put your subject to the left in your frame, then it makes for a much more interesting subject. And have some incidental item to the right. Again, making sure your subject is very sharp. And that is going to immediately draw your audience directly to your main subject. Very important. We didn't talk about high dynamic range. That's a very exciting subject. 
you can go and just check out high dynamic range and see all kinds of examples. One quick word before I get the uh, Terminator finger over there from Mr. Schistler. That is shooting flowers. Don't just shoot, of course, shooting the, the front or the, what's called the pe the pe pestle, the, the pistol in the middle. I don't remember what it's called, biology, blah, blah, uh, Don't just shoot that. <clears throat> shoot b the back side of the flower and have the other flowers that are watching you take that photograph of that flower saying, why isn't he shooting me? Uh, shoot the back side of the flower and get yourself a little water bottle with a spray unit on it and spray water on it and make it give it that shimmering look. And it just adds a nice dimension. It looks like it was just taken in the rain. Or you can spray the mist on it while you you know have your assistant, your son, spray water on it so it looks like it's raining while you're shooting it. And if those water drops are big enough, you can actually get reflection in that water drop. And you can turn that reflection of that flower into your main subject. So that's what you're shooting. We could also talk about shooting silhouettes. And if you're shooting a silhouette, make sure... I feel sure, like you're yelling at me, Tom. Make sure you're that person me. that you're shooting has his head turned so you get his profile shot. And you have light in the background and his profile's in the dark. So if you just shoot him straight on, you get nothing. So make sure you have a profile shot. Very important. A lot of fun information. Yeah, I do want to remind those who are listening who enjoy the idea of astrophotography, Adorama has some great deals, like I said, for that uh, for that camera I was telling you about. They actually have a sweet deal. It's $1,500, the Canon EOS 60DA. Uh, it comes with three great accessories. It actually comes with the Canon BG battery grip, so you can do vertical shots. That's $140 right there, free, with it. And then it comes with, of course, a bag and a... Uh, a, a formatted card that you know Tom will format every day every for day. you if you wanted yeah. to. But Send the grip, the grip's a great deal. I have that on my camera. I highly suggest it. So if you're looking for a good camera, this is also a great camera just to have for your day-to-day -day sh shooting, and uh, but also for astro uh, astrology. Yeah. So that's fine at Adorama.com, and you're listening to Limit Star Internet Radio's Aperture and Shutter Speed. We'll see you next Wednesday at three o'clock. If you missed today's show, you're getting the tail end. Make sure to check out SoundCloud for our. our uh, archives and also youtube we're on youtube you actually see the passion of tom's eyes when he talks about formatting your card format your card but this is uh dick schistler signing off with trmorephotos.com and we'll be back with more aperture and show speed next week on wednesday 3 p.m thank you for listening hey everyone this is tina your host from retro saturdays I wanted to invite you to visit the Lone Star Studios here in downtown Conroe, Texas. We're all volunteers here, and we need your help in serving the Montgomery County area. Radio media is a fun field to be in. Lone Star Internet Radio serves Montgomery County with news, current events, local programming, and, of course, music. If you are interested in volunteering and sharing your talents in media, go to IRLongStore.com and let us hear from you. Lone Star Internet Radio, serving Montgomery County from the heart of downtown Conroe.